Hey everyone, my name is Rui and we are here. This is going to be week number five of the UBL and it's going to be up against Frosted, coach of the Copenhagen Sawsbucks. And um, we initially invited her into the PGBL and she copped the second seed in the Western Conference. And so she's been doing really well. She uh, got invited into the UBL as well. And unfortunately we never got to battle her in the PGBL, but we finally get our chance here and we are straight into things. Okay, I'm gonna not forget to take a screenshot this time because I did in the last match that I played. Okay, so we see the Victini, Heracross, Mega Pidgeot, regular Diancy, Rotom Wash, and Kartana. So what does that mean she did not bring? Did not bring Gujar. That is insane. Did not bring Gujar. No Piloswine. No Piloswine is wild. No Silvali, no Tentacruel. So did she have removal? Possible Defog, but no real removal. Oh, Defog, um, Rotom Wash as well. Oh. I was thinking Defog, um, Mega Pidgeot, but also potential Defog, um, Kartana, so that's also a thing. Okay. Uh, this is a really interesting matchup. My Swellow has an amazing matchup. Although the Victini is obviously going to be Scarf, either that or the Rotom Wash. Part of me just wants to lead off with... Hmm... Part of me wants to lead off with Shaman, actually. Is that nuts? No, I shouldn't. I, I shouldn't lead off with Shaman. I kind of want to lead off with my Needle Queen here. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna lead off with Needle Queen. I am an Assault Vested Needle Queen, and this is going to be my first time trying out a scarfed uh, um, Garchomp. I know it's a pretty standard set, but um, I've never really gone for that type of a set before. Uh, I hope that I hope it's gonna be fun. I don't know. I've never used one, but um, everybody always tells me, "Why did you not bring Scarfed Garchomp?" And I feel like this has to be time. It has a decent enough matchup. Unfortunately, we are up against the Mega Pidgeot team, but uh, it seems like a good as good enough of an opportunity as ever. So we are up against this thing so the shaman lead would have been atrociously bad but we aren't assault vested needle queen so we do get a free hit off what would be her switch i feel like she knows that an ice beam would be coming so maybe the rotom maybe the rotom maybe the maybe the victini for all i know i feel like she would not want us just stay in okay so if i do believe that the rotom would come in i feel like i should Super Fang in that situation. I should have had Sludge Wave instead of Super Fang. Although it could end up being huge. Who knows? Who the heck knows? I kind of just want to go for the Super Fang. I'm going to click Super Fang. I feel like she switches. Um, I don't think she would want to take this. Um, just straight withdrawals. Doesn't even U-turn. That is very interesting. As I just go for the Super Fang onto this Diancy. That is huge. That is ginormously huge. We, do, we will see the leftovers, but that is ginormous level huge. Uh, so let's see. Needle Queen up against a regular Diancy. We don't get to find out anything about its set, but Earth Power just does just under half. And she does have the free switch into either the Rotom or the Pidgeot. It honestly makes me want to super, play Super Fang again, because... It's going to put this thing in range of, super, of Earth Power. And it covers any switch in that she would want to go for. So I'm just going to click Super Fang again. If she wants to keep this thing in here, then she keeps it in here. And um, it will be weak to Earth Power. But I feel like she would want to play off of the fact that I would have the Earth Power. That I would go for the Earth Power right now. And would potentially go into the Rotom. I feel like the Rotom is her best play right now. And if we can Super Fang on the Rotom, then that would be huge. And... I haven't done any um, pregame calcs on this specifically, but I feel like I should take a Hydro Pump, right? That seems like a thing that I should be able to take with an Assault Vest Anita Queen. I'm a gosh dang Assault Vest Anita Queen. Does go withdraw. Do we see the Rotom? Yes. Okay. Beautiful, beautiful. Um. So let's see. We do get the Super Fang off. Uh, I don't know why why I watched the HP bar go down as, as though I was going to be able to tell anything off of that damage anyway. I know it's going to do... Whatever. You guys get it. You guys get it. Uh, let's see. A straight up defensive Rotom. Oh, I don't have a move to hit this thing unless I just stay in and go for... But I do take a Hydro Pump. 
A hydro pump should not do over half to if it's an uninvested Rotom. But I feel like that's not a risk that I should take, and I feel like I should risk the 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 Volt Switch and just go into my Shaman. Shaman is the very, very obvious switch, but uh I, yeah, I felt like she couldn't risk the Volt Switch because of the potential Garchomp in the back, and uh, Garchomp, gi giving Garchomp free reign in the situation would be not ideal. So now I feel really free to just go for the Tailwind. I feel like there's no chance she doesn't go for a Volt Switch right now, and a Tailwind right now would be ideal. Part of me just... Although, mm, I can't hit the Mega Pidgeot, even with Tailwind, because uh, my, my full set is Seed Flare, Hidden Power Fire and uh, Earth Power. It hits everything except for the Mega Pidgeot. And realistically, that's her best switch in right now. So probably not the best thing that I could could have done right now, but um, regardless, I'll get a Tailwind up for something. Does that help any of my other mods out? It could help my Incineroar if I bring in my Incineroar. Um, it definitely helps out my Nidoqueen if I decide to go back into my Nidoqueen. Um, I don't think I really want to risk the Mega Pidgeot having either Steel Wing or Hidden Power Steel. Hidden Power Steel probably does more. Um, I don't think I want to risk that by going into Diancie in that situation. Oh, okay. Okay, so we're actually back to the point where we DC'd, and it was super unfortunate. We tried so, so much. We tried uh, multiple times to get this battle done on the day that we were battling, and then she had uh, a lot to do the next day. She had a 7.30 class the next morning, so... Uh, we decided to try and postpone until the next day. We attempted that, and then my internet just couldn't connect. I couldn't connect and maintain a stable connection, so... Uh, unfortunately, we did have to have the battle on Showdown, and huge, huge thanks to a friend, uh, Randy HLD, for recreating this match in on the DS with me. And uh, there are going to be a few weird turns where we did have to do a few weird things just to recreate it as much as possible but um or we take we can take it right here from the point where i get a pretty darn useless uh tailwind off uh, because like i said as soon as i clicked uh tailwind i knew that the pidgeot i realized that the pidgeot would be the natural switch in and instead of getting damage on it especially before in megas i leave that seed flare damage on the table and um unfortunately there's nothing much that i could do about it but I figured that my best switch in would be the Incineroar. I I am assault vested. I did also have the potential need a queen play, but uh, I felt like this would ultimately be better. I can try to knock something off. You turn against it. I, it was more of a pivoting option, right? So here uh, she goes for the hurricane. It doesn't do a whole heck of a lot because of the assault vest. Now in the first in the original match, she gets a confusion on my Incineroar. And I just feel like I have to power through it. I click knockoff onto this thing. I get the knockoff off. But uh, on this coming turn, I do hit myself in confusion. So what I do for this recreation is I just go for the EQ uh, just to nullify my, my attack. And then she gets a very, very free uh, Hydro Pump on me. And that was all damage that should not have been there because I outsped easily with un under that tailwind. I should have been able to U-turn out, and I would have been able to assess what I can go into after that. But I know that this Incineroar still has value to me, even after taking that huge, huge Hydro Pump. So I am able to go back in it into the uh, Shaman, and regardless of the fact that I believe the tailwind uh, peters out or is about to peter out, um, I knew once again that the Pidgeot would be the natural uh, switch in, so... Tailwind or not, I was going to Seed Flare just because uh, I need to wear this thing down over time, and I would have loved to have gotten a hit off on this thing before it got the opportunity to Mega Evolve, but I've, who knows? I never get that opportunity, unfortunately, and uh, we're going to have to switch out, but um, this is what I should have done the first time around when, uh, when I went for that Tailwind. It was a super unfortunate play on my part, but now I'm very, very free to switch into my Nidoqueen, and now uh, she get. Uh, I should say Randy gets the confusion on this play. Uh, it doesn't end up mattering, thankfully. It doesn't mess up our recreation too, too much. But uh, now the Rotom is so weak that even though I felt that the Rotom would be the natural switch in, I was free to go for the Ice Beam, and uh, I did calc out that it was a 2 hit KO. I think there was some uh, weirdness with the rolls, but um, this happened in the original match as well. She uh, tried to call my, my switch, and she goes for the Volt Switch into my Nidoqueen, and uh, I was able to take it out with two Ice Beams, so she never actually went for the second Volt Switch in the original game. I was able to to, uh, 
to KO it with the switch in Ice Beam and a secondary Ice Beam on her Volt Switch trying to predict me. But uh, I felt that that was a moment where I was free to kind of hold my ground. And in comes the Victini. I don't want to stand here at all. I didn't want to take uh, a big, big hit. But I was free to go into my Incineroar. And again, my Incineroar is the best answer to this Victini that I have. And I can't... It can't uh, stay around as long as I want it to because it took that um, that big hit with um, that Hydro Pump when it got hit in confusion. But in comes the Diancie, now it's under Trick Room, and now I'm getting kind of scared because I don't quite know what I'm supposed to do against Trick Room. Uh, a lot of my team is fast to, to counteract her fast team, and it has Tailwind, it has Rock Polish on the Diancie as well. So I'm not, and um, something is Scarfed. Uh, my Garchomp is Scarfed. So, I'm not really well prepared for a Trick Room team at all, but um, I end up trying to play a game where I switch around the Trick Room turns. Uh, she originally had gone for Earth Power. Uh, her uh, set in game did, didn't have Power Gem, but we kind of messed up the teams a little bit. So, she did go for uh, an Earth Power there in the original game, but uh, it's a Power Gem here. It doesn't end up mattering to the uh, overall recreation, but um, I have to make a few calls, right? So, she goes for Earth Power onto the... Um, Shaman, she goes for the Moonblast into the Nidoqueen that I switch in, and now she go she actually went for another Earth Power here into the Nidoqueen, which uh, let me switch into the uh, Swellow, but for recreation purposes, I told Randy just to go for the Trick Room to, to reverse the Trick Room, um, because it was a null turn either way, because uh, she had gone for the Earth Power, which I was immune to, and allows me to freely get in my Swellow, pop the Flame Orb, go for the Steel Wing, except she switches in Kartana, and uh, unfortunately, I just end up going for the uh, Heat Wave here, and she really calls me, just, um, I was trying to make some plays to, to call her uh, attacks around the Trick Room, and now she just calls me playing around the Swellow, and um, it's, it's to her advantage, honestly, because... Now I'm in a position where her team kind of uh, beats mine with her Trick Room options. If she can get Trick Room up again, it definitely beats mine. But um, her playing me, her playing around that Swello was absolutely the sequence of the match. Well, in all fairness, I think we should say that my playing around her Trick Room and then right after that, her playing around my Swello were the two sequences of the match. But unfortunately, it does net her more momentum than it is going to end up netting me. And now in a position where I can finally take out this Diancie. Because now, now in my head I'm thinking, oh, she, she kind of wants to switch between this Diancie and Kartana to preserve them and, and to protect each other. So now I start making some some silly switches and taking more damage. But eventually I just Iron Head into the dang, um, uh, into the dang Diancie to take it out. Um, I bring in the Shaman and then I double switch into the Incineroar. Because I knew I couldn't prevent this thing from getting a beast boost up, and I knew that this thing is scarfed um, from the way that she was playing it. But I know I can prevent this this thing from getting a beast boost up. But the only thing that I could do is uh, intimidate it so to nullify the beast boost, um, and that was a pretty darn unfortunate way to have to play this match. But uh, it was definitely what I knew that I had to do, and hopefully I could go into my swallow and kind of threaten it with. Um, because I knew at neutral it couldn't take me out with a leaf blade. And uh again, this is just a section where I play poorly around this Kartana. I kept trying to th I kept trying to believe that she would let me take out her Kartana or let me take out her Swellow. So I steel wing into a, uh, a Kartana switch in, a heat wave into the Diancy switches switches in, I heat wave into the, the Victini switching in, and I just play this really poorly. If I'd made a few predictions here, if I'd made one prediction that had gone my way, then I'd be in a fantastic position to win, but now she gets a very, very free Trick Room up, and uh, she's in a position to take out the rest of my team at this point. Now, um, now I end up just sacking off my Shaman here, because I know a blue, flare, a blue Flare is going to come into my Swallow, and my only play is to try to uh, outlast this Trick Room, and if, by some chance, I can get uh, a Rock Polish up with my Mega Diancie, then I can win this match, but um, now I'm in a position where I have to bring in my Diancy just to deal with his Victini, and I don't have any other option at this point. Um, also, in the original match, um, Frosted had Energy Ball for my Diancy, um, but 
Again, something went wrong with the with the um, sets that she sent me, and it didn't end up having energy balls. So that's another unfortunate moment. But again, it doesn't end up mattering. Um, in comes the hair cross, and the hair cross can still just destroy me. Uh, also, keep in mind that after taking an energy ball, the Diancy was a lot lower. So I don't know if that helped be uh, before flame War popping, but uh, I I maybe could have taken it. I don't know. Either way, go, go goes for the earthquake, and it's just in a position to destroy my. Need a queen here. I think the better option would have been to uh, go into the guard chomp, uh, sack the guard chomp off first, and burn a couple turns of trick room, um, and then try to win with the need a queen. But in my mind, in my mind, I was at this point I was still thinking that scarf guard chomp could win this at, in the end uh, somehow. But at this point, I was in a position where. Uh, I thought that Scarf Garchomp could win after Trick Room expired, but thinking about it now, it was never in a position to win after this expired. Now this uh, ends up happening very, very differently for him, how it happened in game, and I'm gonna try to um, leave how it ended um, somewhere around. But uh, the Heracross actually ends up Okoing the Garchomp, and um, then I believe uh, I just bring in Diancy the. The Heracross takes out my Diancy as I try to rock polish because my last ditch effort, my absolute last ditch effort was to try to, was if she switched and I have a rock polish up on my Diancy, then I can genuinely win because I can take out the Pidgeot, I can take out the a Scarf Tartana, and I can Moonblast onto the Heracross. So that was legitimately my only chance to win. Um... Regardless, uh, Trick Room was not something that I prepared very well for at all, and uh, I thought I could do better against this team. The matchup was a very, very interesting one. She played me very, very well in that middle sequence around my Swellow, and like I said, I, I did my best to play around her Trick Room, but that's how Week 5 is going to end, I suppose. But with that, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back really, really soon. ICBA should be going up tomorrow, Monday, and then more UBL and other stuff coming really, really soon. But with that, once again, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm going to be once again.